How's it going YouTube? Chaos Prime here and today we have a few things to go through. So it seems the bad news, the bad PR just won't leave Bioware and EA alone. First you had the VIP demo, then the open demo, then the game launched with a plethora of bugs, some game breaking, you had inscriptions not working, missions crashing, then you had them trying to do bug fixes which made it worse, you had the loot issue. It just seems it's one thing after another and EA and Bioware are literally stuck in a revolving PR nightmare. Now though I do like Anthem and I am a public supporter of it and I do believe that the game will get better and it doesn't deserve half the criticisms it's getting, don't get me wrong I do believe some of them are genuinely valid, but based on my experience of how I'm playing it, I haven't seen two thirds of the issues people are reporting, but that's just me. So I can only go by what I'm seeing and what I'm saying. Yes I've crashed, yes I've blue screened, yes the game has hung for me, but I'm not experiencing much of that. In fact it's very very minimal. Maybe I'll crash once every 3 or 4 days, I mean that's me being genuine. Otherwise I'm not really seeing anything. Yeah I had a few contracts that didn't complete, but overall the experience has been good. That being said the PR nightmare just keeps on rolling and now it seems because I do feel I have a responsibility in order to let you all know that it seems that Anthem could brick your PS4. At least that's what they're saying. Now based on the responses that I've been hearing, what's actually been happening when you shut the game down is giving a shutdown command to your PS4. Now how the PS4 is reacting to this is exactly how it would if you pulled the plug out. Now this is never a good thing because when you plug it back in, it pretty much needs to repair everything. This extends the duration of the boot up time from 30 seconds to a minute tops, not like the 5-6 minutes people are reporting at least anyway, but it is something I need to put out there. Now one person has claimed that their PS4 has been bricked, whether or not this is true I do not know, I don't really see it bricking PS4s, it's not overheating, it's not melting the CPU like God of War did, it's not doing anything like that. It's just for some reason when you shut the game down, there is a small chance that it, it can send a kill switch command to your PS4 to basically shut down immediately. Pretty annoying, I don't know if this can damage your PS4, but if you're worried, and this only affects the PS4 not the Xbox, so if you're worried, you may want to stay away from the game for a few days until they fix it. Now you're probably wondering how the hell does something this massive pass QA? Well the fact is, they don't have much time to test these patches. That's a given. Well you're probably wondering how something like this passed QA and also passed Sony's QA right because there is compliance testing. Well to be honest, unlike a proper build which takes 5 days to test, patches normally take 1. Now considering it was intermittent, it's highly possible that the QA or Bioware probably never saw it. I mean it wouldn't be smart on their part to release something like this because if they did, Knowing they release something like this, they could be liable for damages should a PS4 break, and no one wants to be liable for that. Obviously you'd have to prove that they were knowledgeable, but that's a side story. But that's another story. The other side of the coin is how did Sony miss it? Well Sony only has a day to test it, they're testing everything in the patch, and if this is something that simply did not come across, then well, if it didn't trigger, it didn't trigger, they don't have extensive time to test it. So considering the nature of the patch and the nature of the bug, it is highly possible that after all their testing, it just didn't trigger. At the moment we don't really fully understand what the trigger is, but shutting down the game completely as in closed application seems to be one of the actual triggers. If you don't do this and you just shut the PS4 down after you've uh, got to the dashboard, then there is not going to be any problem. Now I've personally always shut the game down from the closed application and have never had the PS4 turn off. A friend of mine tonight did actually shut it down and I did notice on Discord that his PS4 did shut down. He was a bit worried, he put it back on, it took about 45 seconds for it to repair the hard drive, much like it does on pretty much everything else that happens with a PS4 because it does love this functionality and well it basically boots up fine. Whether or not it can actually brick your PS4, I can't confirm this, I don't know, and the single report that's out there, which is a single report, could just be a troll, but one thing it is doing is shutting down your PS4 in a manner that is pretty much a kill switch, and that's never a good thing. So like I said, the bad PR just keeps on coming towards Bioware, towards EA, and honestly I really hope they manage to turn things around soon, because if this continues, 
it's going to get worse and worse. I really enjoy Anthem, I really like Anthem, I really do love Anthem. However, at this point in time with the amount of technical issues that they're having, the bad PR, the bad press, the bannings and everything else that's pretty much piling on them, I think at some point it basically needs to give and just give EA and Bioware a break because at this point they need a win and they need it hard because at the moment just nothing is going their way. Right, next I wanted to talk about the roadmap and in particular what we should be getting in March. So in March we should be getting a host of new items, legendary missions phase 1 so I believe we're going to get one or two legendary missions which is basically the test bed for the future versions should it actually be successful and good. We're going to get Debbie Giants coming back again. Hopefully we'll get a different vinyl to unlock. Otherwise it's a waste of time. We're going to be getting Outlaw Outrage, which I believe we have had. Um, so that's a reoccurring event. So we're getting that again in March. We're going to get a host of new items. So I'm hoping new components, new weapons, new gear for all classes. And as well as new vanity items within the shop. Because honestly, the cycle of four days or two days is really short and having looked at the data mine it's really really low on what's going to be available whether that's a good thing or a bad thing i'll leave up to you on the roadmap we also have two cortex locked and both of these are free play missions what these could be is anyone's guess i genuinely don't know it's not new missions because that's set for the next month's roadmap so at this point i genuinely don't know what it could be but the fact that it's free play and how much central focus they are on free play and keeping the events in free play does somewhat scare me. We were having a discussion today and though it seems plausible to keep them there and possible to have actual events within free play, especially they could just create a whole new dungeon and entrance during these points. I'm going to be skeptical and wait and see, but I do hope they do turn out to be good again. Bioware need a win at this point and these would be good wins. Probably the biggest item on the March roadmap is the Elysian Stronghold caches. So when this arrives there won't be any new stronghold however these caches will be available within each stronghold for you to collect. These will introduce a mini quest every day which will allow you to get a key. You use that key at the end of the stronghold in order to open a chest. That chest then rewards you with a single vanity item. There are a total of 100 vanity items to collect and if you go in with a group when all four of you open a chest all four of you get an item. The items you get are rewarded on a knockout basis so you can never get a dupe until you collect all 100 items. This is a pretty cool system it's a pretty nice incentive to go in and finish the strongholds so you can get this cool loot and actually look great while you're doing it. So hopefully this turns out to be really good the new items turn out to be awesome and the legendary missions actually reward you handsomely because they are legendary missions. Last but not least it seems that Anthem Codex has been looking around and they are pretty much the masters of the law when it comes to Anthem at least in my eyes because I do go there and I do read a lot about the stuff and they are pretty knowledgeable when it comes to this stuff. They have noticed that the momentum that this sphere this creation this infrastructure has started to move and react a lot more and I've noticed personally myself the lightning does seem a little more intense and if you look at the actual law for this tab it does state it does control or create shape of streams so it's pretty interesting to see this finally starting to come to life some people say it's always been moving some people say it's only just started moving whether it is or not I'm not sure but the simple fact is I don't believe this is going to be the shape of surge because that's not set for next month but the following month. Now it wouldn't be impossible for them to actually deliver that next month as one of the locked codexes but it doesn't make sense it's a recurring event and they pretty much removed it from the roadmap for the following month in April. So whether this will turn out to be anything at all is up in the air. But nonetheless it is pretty cool and it did instigate me to go and look up the momentum and find out more about it so that's always a good thing. Finally I have a tip for you guys yes an actual tip who would have guessed. So every day you go and pick up your contracts you go to Bryn you go to Yaro you go to Mateus and you pick up your contracts these are recurring contracts that you pick up daily well if you actually go to the launch bay and go and talk to the board 
you pick up all three of them instantly without having to run around the Fort Tarsus in order to get them. Not only is this more efficient, but it just means it's just faster as well and less hassle of having to run around the Fort Tarsus. So in my opinion, it's a win-win situation. Well, that's pretty much all there is for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was useful, and I do hope that no damage comes to your PS4 if you are playing on the PS4. BioWare's PR disaster just keeps on coming, and honestly, at some point, I really hope things turn around for them. Anthem is a really good game. It's a solid game. It's riddled with bugs, riddled with issues. And as a few days ago, I saw a legendary component was offering a 0% boost while in the air, so it's clearly a bug. They have said that there is a patch coming, a major patch, on the 12th, so I do believe that the content drop for the roadmap and everything else will be on the 12th. It may not be, but at this point in time, everything is pointing towards the 12th. It seems they are getting everything ready for that date, so it makes sense to assume that a big content drop will be happening on the 12th of March. Again, it's not confirmed, but based on what we know and what we've seen, the 12th of March seems to be a solid date in order for the content drop to actually take place. Right, thank you for watching everyone, thank you for being here. Leave your comments below and let me know what your thoughts are. Are you worried about the potentiality of the PS4 bricking? Are you excited for the new content that's coming with the roadmap? Have you gone and seen the momentum, seen it for yourself? What do you think? Do you reckon the new events in March are gonna be tailored towards what's happening here? And finally, I hope the tip that I gave you actually will benefit you in one way or another. Right, leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts and until next time, remain legend. <laughs>